I'm not trying to stay young or be cool. I'm 38, I'm bald, I'm white. I can't be wearing ripped jeans calling everybody fam. <laughs> it's just not gonna work for me specifically. I'm just trying to stay malleable, stay flexible, live in the present. Because a lot of people my age, they're starting to give up young. You're getting older, younger. We're getting older, younger because the speed information moves out. There's guys that are my age, in their 30s, that are just tapping out on the future. Check, please, no more future for me. And it's always the same thing that makes them do it. It's always the same thing that makes a guy my age give up on the future, and it's always gender-neutral pronouns. <laughs> Every single time, it's just some dude hears the word they and goes, this world is no longer for me. Every time. <laughs> Every time. I'm trying the new stuff. A couple weeks ago, I joined TikTok, which I think means one week ago, I joined some kind of government watch list. <laughs> which government? Who can say? It could be a couple. Very exciting. <laughs> and I'll say this with no irony. I think it's so beautiful the way the internet has given people a forum to find community around uh, difficult issues there didn't used to be a lot of mainstream space for. Sexuality, gender, race, mental health for sure. Mental health is way different back when I was a kid. Standards of care back in the 1900s. It was a different ball game. <laughs> and now people can find community on the internet, and I think that's so beautiful. I don't love the way some people seem to have gone to therapy one time, and they start making videos to share their newfound wealth of mental health wisdom with the rest of us. They're one and done with therapy going pro, like they're University of Kentucky basketball players. It's wild. <laughs> which is a joke you'd expect to come out of a different comedian, but you get what you get. You get what you get. Right, and I don't want to make too much fun because they're trying to do their best. It's often young women in their dorm room making videos, which that's a dead giveaway that they're not a licensed professional yet, yeah? And they'll, they'll be pointing at words around them. That's the TikTok style, right? That's a tick, just word, that's how they, you don't just say it, you point. And that's okay, and, and I don't wanna make fun of the way young women communicate, especially because in the United States where we live, this is as close as we have to universal mental health coverage. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you for what you're doing, young women. But here's the problem, it's always too big a swing. It's always someone noticing a mundane behavior and attaching a clinical diagnosis to it. It's something everybody's done once or twice, but they're saying anyone who's ever done it is pathological, right? So she'll be like dancing to Megan the Stallion. And this is how I dance, by the way. This is, this is my whole, I dance like one of those cats that's a clock, like. <laughs> So she'll be dancing. My physical comedy is incredible, guys. So <laughs> she'll be dancing to Megan the Stallion and pointing at words, and it'll just be too big a swing, right? Trying hard to be helpful, going too hard with it, right? Like, it'll always be like, if you routinely eat dinner after 8 p.m., you have ADHD. What? <laughs> do I? How do you know? Do I have ADHD or did I work late three nights in a row? How are you sure? You don't even know of me. You're not aware I exist. <laughs> Sometimes it's an even bigger swing, right? Sometimes she'll be dancing and it'll be like, if you exhale every time you inhale, that's a trauma response. How, how is that trauma? I just need to, every time I, or else I'm gonna pop like a bird that ate too much rice at a wedding. That's trauma. Exploding at a party, you don't come back from that. It's no good. But here's the tough part. Here's the tough part. Not all change is progress. Not all the new stuff is good. Sometimes it's just changing Sierra Mist into Starry. And you're like, it's the same, but it's different, and I'm mad. And I get it. I, I had my first seductive old man thought recently. And by that, I don't mean my first thought about a sexy old man. That happened years ago, for sure. Idris Elba's no spring chicken. Harrison Ford can still get it. Yeah, this is settled science, people. This isn't controversy. I had my first seductive old man thought. And by that, I mean my first thought that I was like, oh, the future isn't for me. I was at home. It was just me and my dog, and I was reading the news. My dog, I have a 16-year-old pug. She's so old. Her, uh, her intestines are on what I like to call Shakira mode, because she just poops wherever, whenever. And... <laughs> but it was just me and my dog, and I was reading the news, and I read this uh, headline about a $42 billion Bitcoin heist. And if you don't know, Bitcoin is just the stock market for people who think Spider-Man movies should win more Oscars. That's all it is. <laughs> Thank you, yeah, just defining your terms. So we're all on the same page. And I don't say that to defend the stock market. That's, that's stupid too, right? I don't, 
I don't, I don't want to, oh, I want to hug and kiss the stock market. No, who cares? <laughs> but Bitcoin, $42 billion Bitcoin heist. And I read that headline, and alone in my apartment, I said out loud to no one but my dog, I said oldly, the word heist used to mean something. I said it. <laughs> you needed a getaway driver, a distraction, whatever Bernie Mac did in those movies I've been meaning to rewatch. Kids today have heist too easy. I said it and I meant it. Nowadays, you just email someone like, oh, send me your password so I can reset your password. You still $42 billion? That's not a heist. That's a trick. There's a difference. <laughs> and the difference is you can't do a heist sitting on your toilet. That's a rule I made up and I think it holds. <laughs> and here's the real problem. This isn't, that's not even what, uh, that, I didn't get to that Bitcoin heist trick. I didn't get to that Bitcoin trick as it transpired. I read about it months later after the whole thing had been more or less settled. The headline I read in full said, authorities recover $42 billion Bitcoin heist. That, you can't, right? <laughs> I said no, I said no out loud to my dog as she pooped on the floor. I said no, you can't have Bitcoin and the authorities on your side. You've gotta pick a lane, which is it gonna be? Are you an outlaw or are you a snitch? Choose. <laughs> Because Bitcoin is an untaxed, unregulated form of income, fine. But if you accumulate a bunch of it and someone sneaks up and steals it from you, you can't then pick up the phone and call the government like, 911, someone took my magic money. No, that's not how it goes. <laughs> when someone takes your Bitcoin, you have to find a guy with an eye patch named Continuum and you plug his head directly into a USB cable. And if Continuum double crosses, you dive through the computer screen and you catch him yourself. That's the only way the system works. <laughs> They know by the end of this set, everyone will have clapped three times and given up. That's fine, that's fine, that's fine. You don't get to choose whether progress happens though. Progress happens and you can roll with it or you can get left behind, that's it. Progress happened to me this year and it's fine. You just have to integrate that into how you see the world. Uh, I've been married to my wife for six years. We've been together for nine years and someone I dated, thank you, someone I dated uh, just before we got together this year, they transitioned. They're gender, which I don't have to say because this is Brooklyn. <laughs> I go other places and I'm like, they transition and someone's like, so the glasses are sunglasses now, what's the big deal? <laughs> they turn back, trust the science. <laughs> they transition. They use they and he pronouns now. They use she and her. They got a mustache coming in. They feel so much better in their body the way they move through the world. I think that's so dope. And in my dumb straight guy brain, it's not just better for them, it's better for us as friends. Because now it's like we're not even exes, we're bros. <laughs> exes and bros also would make an incredible name for a gay country song, but I don't play guitar, so someone's gonna have to take that ball and run with it for me. <laughs> It's so wonderful. I'm so happy. And it's mostly the same between us, but there are some differences and that's okay, right? Like when we hang out, we broke up so long ago that people don't know our history. So we get asked questions when we're, when we're together. People will be like, how do you two fellas know each other? <laughs> and I'll say, and this is new to me, but it's fine. I'll go, oh him, he and I, we used to date. And I don't have any shame attached to saying that. I just don't know how proud I get to be. <laughs> Because it definitely makes my love life sound more varied and interesting than it's ever been, right? <laughs> Honestly, it's gay stolen valor is what it is. <laughs> it's like putting on a camo jacket, sitting down at a townie bar, like, you're welcome for my service. Free drinks, no questions. Because <laughs> what I've come to learn over the past several years, as many of us have, I think, is that when someone makes that kind of change with their body, what they're doing is bringing the way they look and feel physically in line with the person they've known themselves to be on the inside for a long time, often forever. And I think that's such a beautiful gift to give to yourself. I think that's so wonderful. And what that logically means, given that they're the same person for the whole time, is that 10 years ago for 20 months, I was in a gay relationship. <laughs> and no one told me till this February. And I'm glad I'm in the loop now. I'm not mad at it. That's part of who I am. I just don't know if I can march at the front of the parades. Do you get what I'm saying? That's right, like I'm, I show up like I'm here, I'm queer on a technicality and I feel like someone would throw a brick at me and they'd be right to do it. Like Stonewall this loser. Thank you all so much. Have a great night. Thank you.